Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome to another Inside Magna episode and welcome to this vehicle. It's not what it says it is because it's been completely adapted and modified underneath by Magna. I think you and I probably agree plug-in hybrids generally suck. They're kind of the worst of both worlds is where we've kind of leveraged in on. You have really, really low power electric motors that kind of only work in inner city use. And then you have a combustion engine that is typically pretty weak and not so efficient and you're hauling around all the batteries and it just doesn't seem to make the most sense. And while, um, uh, you know, basically I think Magna recognized this and said, hey, we hate plug-in hybrids too. Let's create a better solution. It's sort of impossible to go fully electric for everyone right now. I think, you know, major developed markets, US, Europe, ch parts of China, very possible to go full, full BEV. Um, however, there are still developing markets. There's so many uh, considerations to go into that we should try to make still more efficient combustion applications and plug-in hybrids for either people who are not ready to go battery electric or for markets that literally cannot handle it. And I think this is a pretty interesting solution. Again, not perfect, but it is probably as close to as good as it's gonna get for a plug-in hybrid with, I would like to say today's technology, but this is actually really tomorrow's technology. So I'm gonna walk you through how this car is laid out. We're gonna shred it around the track, talk about all the different drive modes and crazy things you can do, uh, because it's really quite interesting what you can do with this vehicle. This is the Magna Intelligent Command. Now we have driven a lot of the Magna Intelligent X, something we've driven the Intelligent Force that you guys may know, most notably that cool pickup truck that had the EB axle in the rear. So Magna's really getting into the world of trying to develop the best powertrain solutions so that hopefully they'll have customers that buy them and put them in their cars and then there can be some adaptations. So this is really a showcase of some of the work that they're really able to do. I've never seen quite a solution similar to this. So I, I, let me walk you through a little bit about what's going on. Up front, you have a three cylinder turbocharged combustion engine that really won't be used very often. You then have a 140 kilowatt electric motor paired with this uh, combustion engine. And then on the rear, you have a 160 kilowatt uh, electric motor that can power the rear. Funny enough, this one actually has active torque vectoring as well. So there, as well, so there's plenty of different configurations you can do. We're actually going to put this up on a lift, and we'll have one of the lead engineers tell us everything they've done with this. But the things that you should really, you know, go into this understanding is this can do over 100 kilometers, depending on the drive cycle, on full battery electric power alone. So, which is great. You get huge power. We're talking, you know, 400, close to 400 horsepower in electric mode. So. You and I, meant, you know, we talk about this is plug-in hybrids suck to drive. Some of them you can't even maintain highway speeds or get around the city without kicking on the combustion engine for extra power. This makes way more power than you could ever need in electric mode. And so it can also, you know, be adapted to do level two or DC fast charging, depending on what the manufacturer wants to do for uh, the battery pack. I say level two charging probably makes the most sense, but these, these figures and everything can be totally adapted depending on who installs this in their, their series production model. And then if you're cruising down the highway, this one has, again, the combustion engine with a five speed DCT transmission that can actually um, shut down the high voltage systems and then run purely on combustion. Now we talk about range extended EVs a lot. And there are some benefits to this, especially in low speed driving where range extending is more efficient, but actually this has more than enough range. I think in my opinion, you know, 60 plus miles of driving to do all of the urban driving you need to do. And then when you're cruising down the highway, you're going on a road trip, it's actually more efficient to have a combustion engine directly linked to the wheels. And that's what they can do here. Um, so, so it's all focused on efficiency. They wanted a plug-in hybrid that didn't suck to drive in the city, that had usable range and performance. And then when you're going on a long trip, you have that combustion engine that is the most efficient possible when cruising for hours on end. So we're gonna sit down with some of the engineers, go for a drive, try out all the different drive modes, try and confuse it, see how it's all you know, programmed up. And then, um, yeah, really looking forward to this. By the way, if you take a look inside, proper prototype. It's got the red button. We love driving cars with the red button and it's right hand drive, which is super neat. And uh, yeah, they have their own control stack software on there so we can play around with all the different drive modes, configurations, and 
Yeah, it's gonna be a video for the nerds, but I'm really looking forward to seeing all of the different modes we can drive this in and how it performs in each. Simon, this is your crazy hybrid solution that you've pretty much developed uh, here at Magna. Can you explain just very roughly the mechanicals of how it's all put together underneath if we just take a quick peruse? Okay, yeah. so it's called the Intelligent Command, by the way, and this is like the latest and greatest hybrid approach we have. Uh, our target was to, on the one hand, have a BEF-like drivability, means we are installing more power than is typically installed to cars like that, that we have a versatile, uh, versi how you call it? Versatility. Versatile. Yeah. Versatility, yeah. Uh, very, dif very difficult for an Austrian guy. <laughs> versatility, like a PHEV, yeah. so you can either drive purely electric, hybrid, or purely ice. And the other really important target for us is to still have great efficiency if you drive it purely with the combustion engine, which will happen in real life going long distances anyway. Right, and I think we'll talk about it a little bit more when we're on the test track with it, but typically plug-in hybrids are the worst of both worlds. You have really bad electrical acceleration, you have a terrible engine that doesn't do much, and here in this case, you can get pretty much full performance with an electric system but then the combustion engine can actually connect, go to the wheels, so when you're cruising down the highway, that's the most efficient use of its resource. Um, so how does it all work under here? Just take us on a quick little drive or roll through. Yeah, how does it all work? Starting on the rear end, uh, we see our so-called EDS Mid Plus electric motor on the rear. It's capable for 160 kilowatt of peak power, which is about twice the amount of power that is typically installed on a P4 rear axle. In a hybrid. And what is the nominal power once you come off peak? Uh, the nominal power is about 50% of that. Okay. So the continuous power is in the range of 80 kilowatts. And how long can you hold peak for typically? Um, maybe that's also unique. Uh, if we talk about peak, we are talking about 30 seconds, mm -hmm. which is quite a long time. Mm -hmm. If the Chinese market, for example, is talking about peak, they are talking about 5 to 10 seconds. So it's a really capable system, and this has two reasons. On the one hand, uh, of course, we want to improve the vehicle dynamics, the drivability, and on the other hand, this is a Land Rover. So this has to have a certain off-road capability, yeah. and this is not requiring high power, but high torque. Right. for a longer time yeah, absolutely. to improve the traction capability. And that's the reason we have chosen for this one. By the way, power 160 kilowatt torque is 3,750 newton meter maximum on X level. And the axle level. Yeah, yeah. which not on, not on the motor <laughs> level, but which is, which is also quite a, a bold statement. Right, so that's yeah. after the, the reduction, of course. Which after is, the reduction, which yeah. is roughly a ratio of 10, yeah. Okay, wow, pretty good, yeah. And then you have, uh, where's the battery pack located? Uh, the battery pack is located under the under the rear seat, which yep. is a typical position, I think, for the for the for the battery pack. And then we have I always call it the electric drive shaft, which is the orange cables. Yeah, the I like this. <laughs> yeah. So we have installed a big electric electro, electric drive shaft. And now comes the point: if you have a big motor on the rear, and if you have a big electric drive shaft with the two. Uh, orange wires, you also need to have a certain capability to generate electric power on the front. We're yes. talking about the PHEV, means battery size is always limited. Mm -hmm. So this means for, for all the critical maneuvers during off-roading, during performance driving, we need to be able to generate the power we need on the rear axle by the ice on the front axle. Yeah. And we also somehow need to be able to keep the, the, the state of charge somehow constant to right. have a certain availability. Otherwise you end up with, you do have the performance for a couple of minutes and then you end up with, yeah, with whatever nothing. is and, left. And that's so important too. And I think we saw this from the Volvo ERAD system early days, right? When, um, you know, essentially if your plug-in hybrid battery is completely flat, you've driven it all the way down, you have to then climb this crazy snowy mountain, which is mm. common, I guess, around here. Um, you still need the rear axle to work. So you got to run the combustion engine up front to generate electricity to charge the battery, which then can go into the electric motor for these extreme scenarios. So mm -hmm. nice that you've thought about that. <laughs> okay, yeah, th this was one of the main targets. And that's also the reason uh, in terms of the choice we made on the front axle. So on the front axle, we have a, a three cylinder uh, combustion engine uh, being capable of 150 kilowatts but we have in combination a P2.5 installed electric motor with 120 kilowatts. Mm -hmm. And now comes the point to combine 150 kilowatts plus 120 kilowatts on one front axle doesn't really make sense, 
but looking on the electric drive shaft, we wanted or we needed to be capable to uh, to supply 50 to 60 kilowatt continuous generative power and this led us to the quite big e-motor on the front. Right, that makes sense so because then this can then throw it all back there if it needs to do so. And and how does this all uh, work from a clutching standpoint because sometimes the combustion engine will just power the regeneration or I should say the charging of the high voltage battery pack uh, but then also while you're cruising down the highway um, you pretty much shut down the entire high voltage electric system where it's mostly, uh, uh, I guess, more efficient to run through a dual clutch and a, and a really big reduction or a low reduction, I should say, mm -hmm. ratio. And you're just cruising down. So how does that all kind of work around here? Yeah, this one we have here is the so-called DHD Plus product and the DH dedicated hybrid drive plus. Uh, you can hear it in the name. This is like the the high level solution. So that, that brings up a great point. We are all familiar with the BMW i3 on our channel with the range extender, which it had the little two cylinder, which all its job was, was to power the high voltage battery and then down in. And what you were explaining is that's actually less efficient than if you just connect that motor to the ground. It depends on the operational yeah, condition, let me say it like mm -hmm. this. Uh, if you're driving in a city cycle, very low speed, stop and go, stuff like that. The serial hybrid functionality means uh, fuel to electric energy, electric energy to mechanical power. Mm -hmm. Clearly makes sense because mm -hmm. there is no slipping clutches. Then uh, the efficiency of the of the of the IC at the low torque, low power range is very bad. But as soon as you start to go higher speed, constant speed, high speed, it's clearly more efficient to directly drive the wheels with the eyes and not to the two times conversion of the energy. And what you can do here is do all of that. <laughs> we can do all of that, yeah. yeah. And, and it's up to your control strategy to optimize this. Yeah, and there is another funny feature in this one, but this is like the top end. Yeah. Uh, on the front axle, 150 kilowatt ice, 120 kilowatt uh, electric motor. On the, rear, on, or on the rear axle, 160 kilowatt electric motor with two clutches allowing us for an additional torque vectoring functionality. <laughs> really, this one can torque vector? Yeah, yeah this one rear? also has the torque vectoring <laughs> feature, so that's, that's the last statement I want to do on top. But the funny thing is now in this one, we can either decouple the front axle and purely drive electric with the rear axle. So electric skids. Yeah, we can drive purely with the rear axle and decouple the front ICE plus the electric motor, or we could do, we can basically we do anything, do or we can decouple both electric motors and just drive with the ice. Yeah. So this means depending on, yeah, the driving condition and especially on the efficiency that can be achieved, we are fully free in this configuration. It's really this really fun, and it's right-hand drive. Oh, it's right-hand drive it right -hand too. Drive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this will be great. Yeah, looking That's forward to feature, it. That's another feature, but this is related to our partner during the development. Phase. Right. Sure. Yeah. Well, can't thank you enough for showing us underneath here. Let's run back to the test track and get it out for a drive. Hi, my name is Julian, or hey. Julian. Hey, Julian. I'm part of the Magna concept vehicle team and help up to build up the concept vehicles. I'm actually we are a big team and today I have the privilege to present you our intelligent command. Yeah, so you get to build all the cool stuff. Yeah, well, together with a lot of other people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so in this, in this vehicle, in the intelligent command, we have developed our own software and vehicle controller and we have many functions that we can switch or turn off or turn on mm. for showcase. Okay. And we have this tablet so you or the driver can switch the modes and to visualize uh, like a visualization for some driving maneuvers and this is this, uh, this is really similar to the Model S with the three motors mm -hmm. that you guys built. Do you remember this? Yeah. Yeah. It was before my time. Yeah. But I know the car, the Model S with the three three um three motors but yeah. actually yeah we had two motors on the rear axle and here we have the torque vectoring system with one and, and the clutch disc in the middle right yeah exactly and uh yeah i just recently drove this tesla and this is a similar strategy that you can turn everything on and off with yeah this. Yeah. yeah that's yeah we, we we stick to it because it it has proven <laughs> yeah during our presentation to be very easy to manip manipulate because actually it's pretty difficult if somebody comes into our concept vehicle and drives them for the first time and is concentrating on the driving maneuvers and you cannot ask him to pay attention to the tablet but this configuration has yeah, proven in, in test for yeah, us. Yeah, because it's, it's all the info you need and nothing else you don't. Yeah, and 
Here on this page, we, we divided the, the visualization on this page. You can see the, the front axle, or actually this is a DHD plus, mm -hmm. the transmission with the P2.5 e-machine configuration, which is inside and on one torque path. The upper torque path has the um, even gears and the lower torque path has the odd, has the odd gears. For the, for the dual clutch situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, here we try to show everybody what we are doing with our DHD Plus, what is happening in which um, driving maneuvers, because somebody not close to this technology sometimes has difficult times to 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 figure out in his mind what is happening. And so we try to show what clutch is closed and where the torque or the power is going to and where it's coming from. And this is our idea of showing the, the function of the DHT Plus. This is cool. So we'll be able to, in the video, when we're driving with a combustion engine, see exactly what's going on here with the gears. Yeah, exactly. Um, you, you can see when the, uh, the combustion engine is turned on or the e-machine is turned on and if we are providing power to the wheels or if we are regenerating and where the power is going through, which gear it's going and and the electric like motor, does this run through the gearbox always, or is this a separate torque path? Always through the gear path. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's connected um, permanently to this torque path. And here we have the second and the fourth gear. So those are the two gears it can yeah. operate in. Yeah, so you have the, the two-speed capability of the machine. You actually can go with the second gear up to 120 kilometers per hour, and then you can shift up to the fourth gear, and you can do it all um, electrical or e-drive only. You do not need the, the combustion engine to, to shift gears. So, so zero to 60 miles or zero to 100 kph, no shifting required. Yeah, exactly. And the, the shifting point itself depends on the driving mode. We have the comfort mode and the more sporty mode. And the exact shifting point depends on the on the driving mode. And in comfort, we shift at 80 kilometers per hour, more mm -hmm. or less. Mm -hmm. But you can try it out yourself. Yeah, I'm looking on. forward to seeing that. Mm -hmm. And then, when we go to the vehicle dynamics, mm -hmm. um, we have another page. Here you do not see the, the, the inner life of the DHT Plus, but you see we have the e-machine on the front and on the rear axle. The combustion engine we did not display in this one, but um, we showed the, the, the torque on the um, real uh, level. Yep. And given that we have a front e-machine or and a combustion engine and on the rear axle also we can distribute the torque the longitudinal torque uh -huh. and due to the clutch system the twin system we have on the rear axle we can do the lateral torque distribution uh -huh. and here you can exactly see which torque is act acting on which wheel and if you're in a driving maneuver where we are doing torque vectoring for example then you can see that on the outer outside wheel of the curve uh -huh. the torque is much higher than on the inside curve and this would be more the visualization for the dynamic maneuvers. Mm -hmm. And this is the first one for the hybrid strategy and yeah, for the efficient maneuvers. Yeah, that makes sense. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. What other screens do you have? Just quickly, we don't need to go through all of them, but this um, is interesting. Here we have some, we have many fun functions, like we have the, the active damping function, this vehicle is from us. We have recuperation modes from no recuperation at all, up to one pedal drive, where wow. you do not need um, the brake pedal anymore. So a plug-in mm -hmm. hybrid with one pedal driving as well. Yeah, yeah yes. that's nice. And during the one pedal drive, you can actually uh, modify the recuperation power you want to use. Right, and this can yes. be different because I think what our audience doesn't so understand so much is uh, not everything needs to have the same limitations as this car when it goes into serial production with a customer. This yeah. is just your showcase. But in the showcase, how much regen can you do, recuperation? In this one, up to 60 kilowatt, hour, a kilowatt. Mm -hmm. but this is um, the limiting factor is a battery, actually. Mm -hmm. On the iPad is the intelligent um, reach, for yeah. example, you can re recuperate up to 150 kilowatt. Yeah. And as a limiting factor, is not our e-machine, but it's the battery. And right. since we have put a lot of technology in this car, the battery is only 23 kilowatt hours. Oh, so it's a small, small battery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we are limited to the power. But so. maybe in a series production, you could maybe even go 30, 35 yeah. kilowatt hour situation. Exactly. Actually, um, we always try to show everything possible in these cars, even if um, it's over-engineered, let's mm -hmm. say it this way. Because here the customer, or yeah, um, in presentation mode, the customer can try out um, configurations and has, has only the hardware limitations, right? So the driving situations, like if you're going with 40 kilometers per hour in one pedal drive uh -huh. and recuperate like 60 kilowatt, it feels 
a, like a very strong braking mm -hmm. and if you have the same recuperation power but on 120 kilometers per hour it feels like. comfortable yeah. so you can try out and and all these functions you can turn on or off and um, it's just so the customers can try out themselves what configuration is yeah, it um, makes the most sense. Makes and the, them, yeah. the idea for you is to show here's everything possible with this drivetrain. So yeah. that if a large automaker approaches you or a, a new entrant and says, hey, we want to make a plug-in hybrid, yeah. you can just say, great, we have this whole solution. And okay, you want a little more, a little less power, this size battery pack, and then you package it and enter production with it. Exactly. For for example, this one, as um, said by Simon earlier, this from the function point of view, this is like a, a, a it's it's equivalent mm -hmm. to an an BEV to an only electrical vehicle. Right. And you have this P two point five architecture on the front, the P four architecture on the rear axle, and you can turn off one axle completely. So you have a completely different vehicle. Yeah. Or you can turn off the front axle completely. Then you have a, just a P four yep. configuration, and you can try out what fits your needs more and yeah what. And, and feel the difference in the handling course, for example. You can go with this vehicle in all wheel drive, only front wheel drive or rear wheel drive in the handling course, or mm -hmm. dynamic maneuvers, and you get to experience right away the different vehicle behavior. And you have yes. different hybrid modes to simulate a plug in hybrid, a regular series hybrid, perhaps a yeah. mild hybrid, and a battery electric. Yeah, exactly. It's all, all possible. Yeah, this is cool. And then um, another nice feature in my opinion is the driving modes we have in, in every concept vehicle we um, build up mm -hmm. we have three driving modes the, the comfort the sport and the dynamic mode mm -hmm. and the difference between these modes is um, the torque distribution in the vehicle so it goes so, farther back the yeah, more we go up the comfort mode actually is slightly under steering if you're in the circle you can try it out yourself later mm -hmm. it's slightly under steering because this to most customers is a the easiest or the most stable um, driving situation, most easy to handle. And then the sport mode, um, the purpose of the sport mode is to have best lap times on a handling course, for example, and we shift more power to the rear axle and do torque more torque vector as well, yeah. And on the dynamic mode, we shift much more power to the rear axle than needed and do more torque vectoring than needed. So you for can, skids. Yeah, you can oversteer very easily. <laughs> but as a matter of fact, um, so our vehicle dynamic model on the on the vehicle controller, it, it takes um, dri driver inputs like steering angle and acceleration pedal position, and you can also do um, drift with the sport mode easily yeah. if you want. You just have to oversteer, right? You just got to put in a big input, big throttle, yeah. and then the car is like, oh, I know what's going on. Exactly. Then yeah. our vehicle controller interprets yes. your, your behavior like you wanted to oversteer, and yeah. that's what we do. And, yeah. <laughs> that's so, great. But it's up to you to test. Oh yes. Is it weird driving a right-hand drive vehicle? Here on the test track it's no problem, but if you're going outside, you have to drive I, I always <laughs> tend to drive too too um, too too far to the left. Yes, of and course. And so the co-driver always is nervous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now here you can see in blue that we are accelerating yep. or t a motoric or yeah, yeah, well, yeah, accelerating, yeah. And now if you go up to like 80 kilometers per hour, more or less. Yeah, there's the shift. There's the shift to the third and um, to the third gear. Okay. And we have this. We call it K0, the the clutch mm -hmm. to the en engine. It's always opened. Oh, so it can do third gear in an electric yeah, situation. Yeah, that's, okay. that's the benefit of the K0 clutch. Yeah. We can disconnect completely the, en the combustion engine, and we can use every gear in the electrical drive only. Mm -hmm. For example, given that this is a Range Rover. You also want it to be like off-road capable. Yep. And for this reason, we still have a first uh, a first gear inside this vehicle. Oh, really? Because actually, you do not need a first gear with electrical machine. Mm -hmm. We have um, the co the maximum torque at standstill available, mm -hmm. and we can just um, if I go now, we just go with the second gear, right? Right. We can yeah. Start. But for off-road reasons, for example, we have the possibility to to take the the oh, first like gear. a hill climb situation. Yeah, like a hill climb situation. But this is only in front wheel drive? Yeah, um, uh, right now, yeah. because we are still working on this car and still in application and we do yeah. not have every function available yet we sure. want to. So it's but eventually you'll be able to do the all wheel drive. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. 
Yeah, now you're going through the first, first gear. gear path, you have yeah. to to excuse the visualization error. Oh, yeah, and it's now a little it bit yeah, yeah. <laughs> But now we're going. Here's no no yeah. gear set or no gear put right. in. And this is just for a hill climb, is what it's set Or if set you as. have to pull a trailer in the city and if you, in the zero emission zone, for example, you can pull a trailer with a vehicle. Yeah. And we also have a mechanical reverse gear. Um, oh yeah, I hear this. this yeah. That's really a, a mechanical one. You have to excuse our visualization. Yeah, yeah. It's not. <laughs> It's no, okay. End it yet. As long as it works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty interesting. So you have two different, totally different drivetrains that you can then blend together. You can combine or use them separated. Mm -hmm. and For the engine, does it require warm-up time before you can really go hard mm, throttle? No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. But um, we have the next generation hardware of this coming. And right now we can only open and close the clutch, the case hero, mm -hmm. and stand still. And with, because we are installing our own prototypes in oh, the vehicle, right? Cool. And we are working on our prototypes and um, due to some load issues, since so next generation we are putting in, we'll be able to connect while driving the, mm -hmm. the combustion yeah, engine. Yeah, great. And, and now it's always closed if I go on PHV. Right. And now yeah, you're going, this would be the... Is the, the engine spinning right now? Because the not clutch yet, is closed? Not yet, it's here on zero. Oh yeah. But if you have, um, think of a... Um, an overpassing maneuver, or yeah. how, how do you say it? Yeah, overtake, overtake yeah? yep. Overtake, and you accelerate, then the... Right, then it turns comes on. You but can, it turns on without any warm-up period. Yeah, right? exactly. And that's okay for it? Yeah, it's um, it's pulled up by the e-machine. Yeah. So, um, actually this clutch is, is closed then, mm -hmm. and this one is slipping, right. and then you, you can you can still transmit with the e-machine torque to the to the street so while this is turning while this on. one is, is pu being pu pulled up by the e-machine oh that's and really then, cool then we switch so you on. can use the other clutch to start the combustion engine exactly yeah. oh how yeah, cool yeah, is we, that you just put in a gear on this one torque yeah. pass and you let the v um, the clutch slip so you yep. do not change the, the velocity and, yeah, yeah and then you pull the combustion engine up with this one that's neat actually in the sport mode we always have the combustion turned on because if we are in handling course, you don't we want don't want it to turn up. it on, off, on, off. Right. And so we, in comfort mode, it turns off because there it's not needed. Mm -hmm. um, but to be able to compare the comfort mode to the sport mode and to the dynamic mode, I would suggest to just leave it always on. Yes. So you have the same drive same train. Same conditions, yeah. You, you can compare fairly. Um, now it's the comfort mode and I will switch to this mode. Here yep. you can drive and um, you see the torque on the on the wheels, right? right? Primarily front driven here. Mm, yeah, both both axle nodes, yep. uh, AVD and um, you you look up for your um, steering wheel angle fitting the circle mm -hmm. and then if you accelerate you get to a, a to an under steering behavior by while keeping constant the steering sure. wheel angle, right? Yeah. I will slow down again and you just accelerate and you will feel yeah, we'll start exactly. going wide. Yeah, and this is like the easiest behavior to handle for normal customers. Yep. And if you go to the sport mode, for example, then um, if you go accelerate, yeah, then, and you can <laughs> see on the, if you pay attention to the rear wheels, yeah, you see that you are doing torque vectoring on the rear. Right. Yep. And then there's a dynamic mode, right? And there, once again, we pull. Um, we push more power than needed to the rear axle and do more torque vectoring than needed. And then if you accelerate, you start to oversteer. You start to oversteer very quickly. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. So then we can really get this nice rotation on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's it's just easy to handle just between us again. Um, you can only do torque vectoring when you are providing power to the rear of axle. Of course, right? yeah. So if you go down from the acceleration pedal, yeah. You only have the recuperation torque to, to do it. But it will still do recuperation torque through vectoring though, yeah, no? but, yeah? but the, It's such little... It's less. And yeah. then you get the feeling like it's not torque vectoring. Right. Even it, if it's... It, yeah, but, sure. But now I, I switch quickly and you drive and you can try out the pedal drive and all okay. configurations. Yeah, that sounds great. Now I'm driving it in full electric mode, which is like, uh, it should give the same impression of a battery electric vehicle uh, driving around the city, right? Yes, yeah, exactly. Very nice. Yeah, one pedal drive comes pretty much to a stop. 
That's so cool. And so you did all these powertrain calibrations at low speed? Yeah, yeah exactly. You you can, have... If you want, you can go on the hill also and try it out with hill hold. And oh, stuff really? Because like yeah. you already have better uh, one pedal calibration than most automakers. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll try a launching to start. Yeah, that, that's okay. To go. Because that's everyone likes to see. In plug-in hybrids, they're always so slow. So let's see what this feels like, shall we? And we're in full forced electric mode. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, plug-in hybrid, comfort mode, cruising along, big power, second gear, shifting, really nice. That's good, It's it, it all kind of works in this kind of mode, which is great. So, can we try sport mode with electric, I guess? Yeah, sure. I will switch it by driving this one. Yeah. Now you're in sport mode. Okay. So now, sport and electric, oh, even quite snappier. And Actually, now it will shift at 120, right? More or less. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah, there was a shift. Yeah, it was a shift. Wow. So this feels just like a battery electric vehicle. I mean, you would know no difference, <laughs> which is what you were intending for, right? Yeah, exactly. That's so that was the purpose. Um, actually, is as um, the state of art of the plug-in hybrids, right? Is mm -hmm. um, to go electric electric driving within the city mm -hmm. and outside of the city you always use a combustion engine and um, you, you go like for the off-road use case or for the highway use case and for every other use case in, within the city mm -hmm. the state of art is to, to use the combustion engine also yeah. and we try to turn it around so that we always go electric or give you the possibility of always driving with a, um, only electrical vehicle yeah. and only adding the combustion engine if you are somewhere where the loading infrastructure is very poor, let's right, say. Right, the charging way, infrastructure, and, yeah, yeah. And stuff like this. Yeah. So you have the capability of of um, going off-road with the mechanical first first gear and the reverse gear and um, yeah, in the city, in the highway, you can, this is actually quite, oh. Yeah, so now we're in uh, sport with combustion on, PHEV mode. Yeah. So this is like a sportier setting, more or less. Yeah, exactly. So in this setting, we do more torque vectoring on the longitudinal yep. ray, depending yep. on your steering wheel angle and acceleration pedal. And the, the lateral torque distribution also is um, increased compared to the comfort yep. mode. But as said, it's, the purpose is to, to, to get the best handling course times here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do the paddle shifting work still? Yeah, no, you can shift with the paddle. And it doesn't affect it at all? No, you can actually see here your transmissions. Yeah. And I think in the in the head display or head-up yeah. display, you also see Yeah, the that's shifts. right. And, it, and I can't break it by doing no, this. No, no, right? you can do whatever you Great. want. Great, yeah. wow. When you combine everything, even at low RPM, it really has quite good acceleration. Yes. And it wanted fourth gear there because the electric motor hit its RPM limit. Yeah. Yeah. But wow, do you get up to speed so quickly in this. It's quite impressive, I have to say. So I think we'll do one loop around because we don't have too much time. So we'll just get a feeling for how the car performs. We'll probably select second gear. So let's come through. We'll just kind of get it set. We'll walk our way up to speed. The seats are not doing a great job of holding us in. So you can see the torque vectoring Right, here. so off throttle, obviously, nothing you can do. Yeah, you have the recuperation torque, you can do lateral torque distribution with, but the recuperation power is limited. Right. What so, if we go to max recuperation? Um, you can go, but still then, compared to the to the driving, feeling by driving, mm -hmm. you still feel, in my opinion, you feel the torque vectoring reducing, mm -hmm. and then if you go off the throttle, it's a little bit tricky. Yeah. <laughs> so then we can go... Yeah, I mean, I think let's just try because we don't have too much time. The mm. most aggressive torque vectoring, I think we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll come in from this way to start. What's funny is my knee hits the seat adjustment. Yeah, it's the same problem. <laughs> yeah, do you, and we figured out and my seat was going, I was like, what's happening here? It's exactly okay. the same thing. So you need to go the other way. <laughs> like, yeah, but this when you're really using funny. the tires only in one direction, yes. you use the circle in the other direction. Yes. This is exactly what happens to us all the time. While driving, we change the seat. So let's take, take the inside loop here. Mm -hmm. A little bit of off throttle, which is nice. We'll come around, stab. Feels pretty good. Coming in under braking. Nice little threshold. Brake, brake pedal feels good, actually. 
We'll hit the low mu surface, okay? So we'll come in gently. There we now go. you have the traction mount turned off, right? Yes. So there's no traction control. <laughs> this is really quite nice to just even off throttle, low speed, right? Big power. My seat's moving. <laughs> Hit the rev limiter. <laughs> what, this is crazy how good this is because we're, we just drove around in electric mode quite quickly. And now we are basically... If you want, you can try out the same one even only electric mode if you want. Oh, we can just drift in electric mode? Yeah, sure. What? You can <laughs> yes. Turn it off. And we can so, just go rear wheel drive too. Yeah, if you want, but then you have only like, now it's now in, now gear set in. Yeah. And now it's disconnected the machine from the front and you only have the rear axle. Let's try this. Yeah, sure. You, and here you can change the modes if you want. If yeah, you want maximum skids. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is really funny. The Evoke is pretty soft, but uh, you have uh, any sort of logic on the rear motor speed or it'll just go to maximum? No, it won't. Go oh, you have some smoothing? Have, yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, makes and sense. Due to the twin clutches, right? Yeah, we have so some we can. limitations. <laughs> we could just do big skids like this all day. <laughs> <laughs> this is quite silly, isn't it? <laughs> Whoa, that's actually really hilarious. This would be amazing to have this technology. Even it's powerful in rear wheel drive. Feels pretty good. So let's come around here. Let's see. Yes. <laughs> okay, I have to do one more skid, sorry. But I'm going to go this way because my seat keeps moving. We'll try again a low speed coming out of this corner. So we'll, again, get it into the corner. Big power. Feels, I mean, needs a little bit more power for this type of driving. Yeah, actually, the battery is due to the, all the hardware installed, the battery yeah. is too, 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 um, too, low, yeah. too low for this configuration, in my opinion. Yeah, but you of can course. try it in all wheel drive again, then you would have the electrical front axle also. Oh, interesting. So we can do this. Now it'll do also front. Yeah, and the combustion engine still is turned off because we have turned it off manually. Right. So now you have electrical front axle, 120 kilowatts, mm -hmm. and 160 on the rear axle, and the torque vectoring on the rear axle. Okay, let's see how this feels then. Feels pretty good. Nice. And the rear is always just electrical, right? Yeah, only electrical really gets in nicely when you get on the power. Off power, big power. Again, neutralizes. Neutralizes quite nicely. A little bouncy, but look at this. Just the way it should be. And <laughs> Maybe if you want to try out. Now if you counter steer, yeah. you feel like the it front... It sends the front, yeah. But this is only a little bit, so you yeah. have the capability of maintaining the drift yes and if you go on the sport mode right then it'll it, send even more yeah even more it will pull you out so right so i love all of the different mm -hmm. configurations you can run this in my favorite is still rear wheel drive electric mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and we'll do it one last time and then we'll end the video so i love that we were able to basically do this which is really great get big angle too with nice steering lock mm -hmm. we can even go the other way if we wanted to <laughs> so we can play around with that yeah. and then of course um, we could just cruise in combustion on the highway or we can do um, you know all-wheel drive in electric mode with a crawling gear or yeah, except, we can do yeah. um, electric skids yeah which is kind of the best part <laughs> little grass there it needed to <laughs> yeah, be mowed anyway <laughs> but you're pretty good driver, I, <laughs> thank you I get nervous with cameras <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> and I didn't even turn off the ESP so. right but, no. but I'm I'm looking forward for you to compare to the other week yeah to the high face situation. yeah yeah this was really great so definitely the future of plug-in hybrids is looking great <laughs> battery electric I think we can all agree is still my ideal tri yeah. train solution yeah but we also can all agree people are going to need plug-in hybrids and why should they suck <laughs> Yeah, they should exactly. be better. <laughs> they, they can they can deliver as as um, like electrical vehicle, right? If if the configuration is right and the driving controller allows it, it's possible. <laughs> and you know, I think we found a good sponsor with Magna Jordan because every time we drive one of their cars, they let us ruin your tires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much for this. I yeah, really appreciate welcome. it.